In this video, I want to talk about modeling windows. So we have successfully so far modeled our two thermal zones for our small building here. And I think the next step, while we could basically do whatever we want next, I think the logical next step is for us to finish modeling the geometry of the building. And the next piece of that is really the windows for this building. So this building has several windows. We'll talk a little bit about how we manage apertures, uh, windows. Um, in Honeybee terms, we call them apertures, um, how those are managed and input into the Honeybee model. And then we'll bring in our elevations and build up our windows on our model here. Before we actually go about modeling the actual windows of this proposed building, let's just talk in uh, sort of general about how we're going to model windows um, in, in, in uh, Honeybee. Uh, there are, a, as with everything, uh, several different ways that we can model windows, but the, the easiest, most straightforward way is to model the windows as individual surfaces in Rhino, and then to bring those in, convert those into apertures, and then host those on the rooms. So let's talk through what all of that means exactly. So I'm here in my Rhino scene. So I'm in my Rhino scene where we have successfully built up our simple little mass. And what I want to do is start modeling the window surfaces in this scene. So I'm going to come over here to my layers palette and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to right click and say new layer and I'm going to call this one O2 and I'm just going to call it win or windows, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to set that as my active layer. <clears throat> For right now, I'm going to go ahead and turn my plans off just so that I don't accidentally snap to them. Now what we're going to want to do is start drawing a bunch of surfaces as windows. Um, uh, Rhino allows us to work in lots of different ways. One easy way that we can draw surfaces on top of other surfaces. So of course I've got a, a, I've got a, a mass here and I want to draw a window on the surface is to come up here to C planes, construction planes, and I can use this little guy right here, this set C plane to surface to temporarily reset my construction plane. So my construction plane has been reset. And now if I were to come over here and just select you know, a rectangular planar surface and just draw that out, that rectangular planar surface is on this, this face. And that's going to be important for us when we get into Honeybee. So I can now come in and I can, using my uh, rectangle command, I can you know, draw whatever I want in terms of, of windows. Now we'll come back and draw these properly in a minute, but for now, let's just say that we've got our geometry in there. Now, how does this become an aperture inside of Honeybee? Uh, and then of course, how are we going to set those parameters in Honeybee pH? So let's put this to the side for a second. Let's bring back our grasshopper scene. So I've got my grasshopper scene here that we were working on in the last video where we are bringing in our mass geometry we're building up a honeybee model and then outputting that to our woofy. Let's go ahead and move this off to the side for now. We don't need this. We, these are off. Notice that these are turned off. We're not writing anything out to woofy right now. We're, we're going to just sort of build up the, the model and then we can output it at the, at the end. So this data right now, if we were to uh, turn preview on here, um, this data is output a, a panel, this data is only in bringing in the O1 geometry information. So only the geometry which is on this layer here. Well, we just drew our windows on O2 window. So how do we get this O2 window in? Well, we can use a, we can use a pipeline just like this one. So I'm going to just um, drag a box. I'm going to uh, come up here and say edit and then say paste and I'll bring this down. Now, all we've done now is just duplicate that. So I'm, I'm bringing in the exact same geometry twice. Well, I don't want that. Obviously, I want to change this so that it's bringing in information from the window layer. So I'll say this. And now I'm going to bring in different geometry. Maybe to make this easy, I'll go ahead and draw a third one so that you can see this is bringing in three um, reference B-reps. And I'll turn this off. So this is bringing in one, two, three uh, reference B-reps. Now, what are we going to do with these? How do we how do we host these in a Honeybee model? Well, Honeybee gives us some great tools for that. So I'm going to come over here to Honeybee, and we'll go to Create. And the first thing we need to do is we need to create, we need to build what are known as HB or Honeybee apertures from this geometry. 
So the first thing we're going to do is use these uh, HB. This is again standard Honeybee. There's nothing. There's no Honeybee pH yet. So we're just using the normal Honeybee Aperture tool, and the normal Honeybee Aperture tool just takes in some geometry, and it creates what Honeybee calls apertures. So these are apertures. We could give them names, we could give them constructions, we could give it all sorts of stuff. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to build up those apertures. Once we have built the apertures, I'm going to come to Honeybee, the next thing we have to do is we have to host the apertures in a room. So we're going to use this add subface component in order to do that. This is all just standard Honeybee again. So I'm going to drop this onto the, combo, uh, to the canvas and notice this is going to take a series of honeybee objects, faces, rooms, what have you, and then it's going to take a series of apertures as well. So actually let's do this. I'm going to move my model over here. I don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take in the rooms. We're going to take the rooms as the source and then we're going to take these apertures and honeybee is going to go off and weave them together. It's going to sort of put them together. And now what we'll have, let's visualize this so that we kind of know exactly what we're talking about here. Visualize by type, honeybee objects, honeybee objects. There we go. And let me, let me uh, set this to wireframe again. And what happened? Oh, whoops, wrong component. Sorry, not organize, visualize. I apologize. Honeybee, visualize, visualize by type, not organize by type, visualize by type. My mistake. Uh, in any event, there we go. And there's our preview. And you can see Honeybee gives us some color. Uh, so we now have some windows, which are showing up as, as color on here. All right, so excellent. So Honeybee has properly hosted these windows into the rooms. Notice here the rooms, and so we can take these rooms, pass these rooms uh, back into our chain, get rid of this, get rid of this, just to keep things tidy here. And so now Honeybee has those those windows. If we were to, for instance, come over here and we were to rewrite our HBJSON and rewrite our Woofy file, if I then came over here and I went to Woofy and I opened up that new file that I just wrote. So I'll come here to my desktop. I'll go to XML files. And I find this new file. Open this up. And notice now I've got my, my windows there. I'm still seeing everything in two cases. We haven't solved that problem yet. But at least the, we know that the windows are properly flowing through into our Woofy file. So that's really good. All right, so let's this to the side for a second. Come back here. I'll turn these off so they're no longer printing. And there we go. All right. So that's the basic workflow when it comes to Windows. We're going to bring the geometry in. We're going to create apertures. And then we're going to host the apertures on the rooms. Those are the, those are the basic steps that we're going to go through. Um, there's a couple things you have to keep in mind here. Um, uh, really, the most important one is that the windows have to be, quote unquote, in or on one zone. So if I was to take this window and move it up here, notice that I just got a warning here. Notice what's happened. This window is partially out of this surface. And Honeybee is saying, listen, I, I can't. I don't know what you want me to do here. You've got a window that's like partially hosted and partially not hosted. So all the windows have to be um, fully hosted inside of a Honeybee room in order for this to work properly. So just keep that in mind. You might get some errors sometimes, but it's often because things are, you know, just, just maybe like a hair over and you can't even really see it until you zoom way in and then you see, oh yeah, that's that's not in the right place. All right, so that's our, that's our process that we're gonna go through. So now that we know that our pipeline is working, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lock this and minimize, and then I'm gonna delete these. So those were not the actual windows, right? We built up the pipeline and everything's working, and now we need to, we need to build the correct input geometry, the correct input geometry. So first things first, I'm gonna go to my C planes here. And um, I think what I'll do is uh, leave this set to my front face here. And I want to import some new elevation geometry. If we go back to our source files here, um, I've got my drawing set. So I've got a bunch of elevations with some information um, around about the windows. So what I want to do is just bring this directly into my Rhino file so that I can trace over it. Right? That's going to be the easiest way for, for me to do this kind of thing. So I'll come back to Rhino here. I'll come to File. Go to import. Now 
I'll select import and now let's import the south elevation. So I, I happen to have my seaplane is on the south elevation. So let's go ahead and import the south elevation. I'll say open, keep it at inches, say OK. Oh, <laughs> I guess it didn't care whether it was on south elevation or not. Let's do this. Turn this off. We should be doing a better job of being tidy here. Uh, OK, so let's do this. First of all, I'm going to select all this. As always, I'm going to come up and type group. And then I want to put it on the right layer. So I'm going to come into my OCAD, 000 CAD. I'm going to make a new sublayer. I'm going to call this elevations. And I've got my, my geometry here that's been grouped. So I'm going to come over to my properties. And I'm going to say layer is elevations. There we go. All right. And let's move this off to the side for a second. I'm going to do the same thing. Come up here to file, go import. I'm going to get my, I guess we could just go in order east elevation. Say OK. There's my east elevation. Before I do anything else, I'm going to group it. And I'm going to put it onto the elevations layer. Move this off to the side. Come in here, say import. Uh, north elevation. Uh, you can see how this, you can see where I'm headed with this. Um, I'm just going to type group. Um, and come here and move these to the elevations. And then lastly, uh, we just have one last elevation. We just have our west elevation to import here. Let's say import. Say OK. And I will group it. And I will put it onto the elevations layer. Let's go back to our layers. I'll delete this zero layer just to keep things tidy. And there's all of our elevations, all flat, all laying down on the, the world. Um, seaplane. So of course we don't want that. So I'm going to select everything, kind of rotate until I see my gumball again, and then I'm going to uh, bring them, rotate them all up to, to vertical. Um, and at this point, what we need to do is we need to kind of move everything into the right position. So if I bring back my geometry here, I've got all these guys and they need to be moved into the right position relative to the geometry so that we can trace the windows. So let's start with this one right here. So this is the west elevation. So I'm just going to take this and rotate it. And I'm just going to use a, let's see, I'm just going to use some simple, some simple move commands. So I'm going to type M for move. I'm going to um, snap on the edge here, get this thing going the right direction, hit the tab key, and then move it so that it uh, snaps to the right place. And now I need to, clearly I need to move it vertically as well. So I'm going to hit M, I'm going to grab the bottom edge here, Oops. hit M and then V for vertical grab the bottom edge here and then move this up into position. And lastly, we'll move it over to the right hand side there. Right, so I've now put this into the right position relative to the mass, the geometry there. So let's do that with the rest of our um, rest of our, our uh, elevations here. So I'll bring this one over, snap that into the right place. I'll bring this. I'm using the tab key on my keyboard to um, get everything moving the right direction. And once it's moving the right direction, I can then snap to the, the edges or snap to wherever I want. Now this one here needs to be spun around. So let's grab this. We'll spin this around and whoops, ungroup. Looks like I grouped these together, which wasn't what I meant to do. I want to group this separately. This should be its own group. That should be its own group. Good. OK. Uh, I'll take this one. And let me see. I don't remember which direction this is supposed to be going. So whoops. Bring up my drawing set here. All right. So the little window is on the right hand side. OK. So this wants to rotate this direction. Let's move this into the right position as well. I hit, hit M. There we go. And then. I'll hit tab to lock my lock my direction and then M and then V to move it vertically. And there we go. Looks like I missed. Looks like I didn't quite snap that to the right place. So I'm going to try that one more time. There we go. So you can move these things around so that they're in the right position. And lastly, we will move this one till it's and you can kind of roughly get it in the right place using those handles there as well. I'm going to I'm having a little trouble with my zoom, so I'm going to hit Z for zoom and then S for selected. And that's going to reset the uh, origin of my camera, make things work a little better. Hit M and V to move this up. And then at last, just the very last step, I'm going to take this and move it, hit the tab key, move this over into position here. Alrighty. So now our elevations are all in the right place relative to the mass of our building. 
So there's a couple different ways that we can now uh, build up our um, our windows themselves, but probably the easiest way, as we were using before, is to use this reset the C plane, reset the construction plane based on the geom the mass geometry of our building. So I'll select this, I'll select this face here. It's asking me, you know, which direction do you want to set as the x-axis? So I'll set that there. Notice that I've reset the construction plane, and now if I come in, I can come here, come to my rectangle, and simply snap, snap. And there we go. And maybe we could even do this. We'll maybe we'll give our windows layer a color. Maybe I'll make them. Maybe I'll make them blue. Uh, they are windows after all. And there's our there's our windows. So we can now come through with our our um, surface tool. And I happen to have a hotkey or a alias set up. So I, I just type SR for surface, and we can just draw out our surfaces like that. So I'm just going to go through uh, quickly and draw out the surfaces. Now on a system, or a surface like this, what we want to do is we want to find the midpoint. Um, so we want to snap that right to the middle. And you can see there that Rhino is helping me find the midpoint. Um, and so with, with these types of surfaces, we want to uh, we want to make sure that we're drawing them to the midline. And notice again that Rhino is kind of helping me find the midpoint there when I hover my mouse over, over those edges. I'm going to do this as well. I'm going to come on here and turn this into shaded instead of ghosted so that I don't accidentally keep snapping to those things behind. I'll do the same thing here and find the midpoint. There we go. And so I'm just I'm just roughly drawing out all the geometry for our windows, and I'm just using the CAD as guideline. I'm just tracing right over it, mid, mid. There we go, and there, and lastly this guy here. Whoops. And so if that kind of thing happens, so notice that I drew that kind of the wrong size. It snapped something I didn't mean to snap to. So what I want to do is I want to move this edge down. So how do I move an edge like that in Rhino? Well, I need to use what's called sub-object selection mode again. We talked about this a little bit before when we were modeling the mass. So I can either hold down the control and shift key on my keyboard and click. And then it'll ask me, what do you want to select? And I'm going to say, well, I want to select that surface edge. And now I can move just that one edge of that surface. Alternatively, I could come in here to filter and I could go to sub object mode and then select the edge, hit the space bar, and now I can move that around as well. So I can either use the uh, keyboard shortcut or the, the filter, either one. Uh, if I want to move this into position, I want to use the move command. So I'm going to type M up here again. I'm going to type M, hit space, and now it gives me an anchor point and then a, a finish point, and I can use that to, or an ending point, and I can use that to re snap. Um, my surface edge. So I'll hit SR again. We'll keep building out our surfaces here. So we've got all of our, our south windows on our project now. So let's uh, let's keep going. We'll finish up all of the windows here uh, in short order. Now what's happening here? So I go to surface and it's looking really weird. All right. R remember we set our construction plane to this face. So if we want to draw windows which are now aligned to this face, the first thing we need to do is reset our construction plane. So I come up here to construction planes, I come up here to set surface, and now what I'll do is reset here. There we go. And now if I come in to my, my normal rectangular surface tool again, notice that it's all now uh, planar um, aligned to the plane that I thought I was going to be drawing on. I'm going to type SR again for surface. That's my um, hockey uh, alias that I have set up just to quickly draw these types of this type of geometry and you can see here I'm just sort of scrubbing through uh, going and hitting one element at a time so we could do this um, quite quickly there are there is another way that we can build up these surfaces if you don't like redrawing or moving the construction plane every time the other way to do it is to keep your construction plane, so construction planes, keep your construction plane at the world zero zero. So this is the sort of um, you know normal origin flat zero zero. And rather than using the um, standard uh, rectangle, what you can do is, is we can use a vertical plane instead. So if your normal C plane is set down at the sort of world zero zero, you can always come in here and you can select this vertical plane. And what this asks us for is two uh, 
starting points. And then notice here I'm constrained to the vertical dimension. So we can certainly do it that way as well. And I just hit the space bar to repeat the previous command, hit the space bar to repeat the previous command. And that's another way that I can very quickly build up these windows without having to reset my construction plane each time. Again, I'm just hitting space bar to repeat the previous command, just like you would in AutoCAD or something like that. And just like that, we have drawn all of our windows. We've built all of our window elements there. Now, at this point, what we can do is come back to our grasshopper window. And we can unfreeze it. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to unlock the solver. This pipeline, because it's a pipeline, is dynamically kind of hoovering up all of the geometry that it finds on that O2 window layer. So all of a sudden we've got you know, 12, 23 different reference BREPs. I've got 23 um, apertures that are being created and 23 apertures that are getting hosted here. As always, we can come into Honeybee, visualize, and we can visualize by type if we want to take a look at what Honeybee has created. Um, the easiest way to do that, of course, is to put this back to wireframe. And there we go. There's all of our windows hosted. You'll notice a little bit of um, weirdness with the uh, visuals that happen sometimes here and there. Of course, some sort of an odd graphics problem with certain uh, circumstances, but it's all working properly. And we know it's working properly because we can pump it out to Woofy just as easily as we did before. So I'll come in here to my um, writer. And I'm going to do this, actually. I'm going to get rid of this toggle. And I'm going to take this toggle, and I'm going to hook it up to both of these elements. So now I only have to, now I only have to um, turn this on once. And when I, when I turn it on, when I set it to run, it's going to run both the HBJSON reader, or excuse me, writer, and the XML writer. So I'll turn that on, I'll turn it on, it'll run both of these, and now I can turn it off. And if I was to go to my desktop, what I would find, <laughs> whoops, is that the wrong desktop? Desktop. What I would find is that I've got new XML files. Um, and again, time stamped. So as we're writing these out, the old ones get preserved. We can throw these out at any point. You know, I can easily just right click and throw them away. Um, but we're generating new time stamped XML files as we as we go here. As before, so this new file is going to have some windows, right? We just we just wrote this out with a bunch of windows. So just as before, I'll come into Woofy Passive. And I'll just go up to File, Open, come to my desktop. I'll filter by XML files, and I'll select the last XML file here, the one with the latest timestamp. Hit OK. And look at that. We've got all of our windows in. Uh, as before, we still have two cases. So I still have an upper and a lower story. We'll fix that in the next uh, video, I think. But it looks like all of our windows are coming through properly. Now, one other thing we might just very briefly touch on, if I was to actually take a look at one of these windows and take a look at the window parameters, generic double pane, like a 0.3 uh, inch pound U value, IPU value. Where did that come from? What's a generic double pane? Well, that's all getting set by Honeybee. So obviously, we have not yet told Honeybee anything at all about constructions, assemblies, uh, U values of glazing, Psi values. Uh, so Honeybee is making a bunch of assumptions, and it's using a bunch of default values for things like R values of the walls, U values of the windows, etc. Now we can and we will reset those to proper passive house um, types and passive house values. But right out of the gate, uh, because we haven't told Honeybee anything else, it's just going to use a bunch of default values for all of that stuff. In any event, it looks like our data is flowing through properly. So again, go back to our Woofy file here. It looks like our, our data is all fly, flowing through. We've got all of our windows here. We've got our different geometry. Of course, uh, the next piece of the puzzle is putting these two cases together. Because in this, in this um, circumstance, we actually don't want these as two separate cases. I want to merge these together into a single room or a single, single building. So I think in the next video, we'll come back and talk about the building segment and how we can use that tool to combine these things together. We'll talk a little bit about, about climate as well.